on this episode, we learn about in-home nursing. We're gonna go to the next patient now. Okay. Billy demonstrates the art of spray painting. We get tribal with our special guest, Ryan Elson. And we start off a brand new set. This, this is, is Rope TV. TV. Welcome to a new episode of Rope TV, where we have a new format and a new set. What do you think of it, Kale? It looks great, and I love the new cushions. Wes is here too. He's the CEO of Rope. Hey, Wes. Hey, guys. How are we? Good, thanks. So, Wes, what's the new look? Well, Kyle, it was a decision that we decided to go a little bit of a different area with Rope TV. We've been sort of keeping the same format for the last six months. And we thought this was an opportunity to get there and involve the community at large. Be able to get more people involved with Rope TV, have people come on and talk about the things that they're doing in their community, the things that they offer their community. Just basically giving everyone a chance to promote what they have, talk about what they do and go from there. So that was the idea of getting there and doing something different. We thought then if we're going to do a new format, why not do a new set? So that's what we did. The couch that you're sitting on was made by the My Future guys. They got there and decided to spiff it up for us. The cushions that you talked about uh, were made by one of the uh, support workers' mothers. And you may notice if you've been to Rope Cafe that the stools to the side of us here are a little bit familiar. And they're actually the stools we used to have as the tables in the cafe and we decided let's paint them colours, let's get there and yes. use them for the new set of Rope TV. <laughs> What does everybody at home think of our new set? We love to know. So tell us what you think by writing something in the comments. Don't be shy if you're watching. Make sure you, you comment. So as part of the new format, we're taking the cameras outside of the studio to meet some people who do interesting things in the community. Who's your first story about? Well, I got to meet Kerry Ann Dooley. She's an in-home nurse. Ann, welcome to Rope TV and thank you so much for taking time out of your super busy schedule to be with us for today. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be on Rope TV. So Kerry Ann, you run an organisation called My Care Ex Enterprises. Can you please tell us all about it? So we started last year and uh, we offer in-home nursing care. So we provide palliative care for people who are dying and need end-of-life care. Wow. And we provide services all over Brisbane North. We go up to Bribe. We've even had clients at Noosa. Can we ride along with you and see a typical day? Absolutely, that'd be great. <laughs> Let's go. So where we are heading off to today, Kerry Ann? So today, our first client that we're visiting, her name is Jane. Jane is about 45 years old. Yep. Sadly, she was in a car accident and um, is paralyzed. Okay, we're ready, Ashley? Yep. Knock, knock. Hello, how are you going? Hello, hello, how are you? Oh, are you? look at the door. Oh, which one's which? This is Lucy. Okay. Oh. Hello, how are you? <laughs> so how do you find the um, My Care Health very helpful, Jane? Really well, because I don't have to leave home, which is sometimes can take a bit to load into the car and out to the car, and it's just really good to have them come to here. That's so lovely. 
We'll see you. Talk soon. Bye. See you guys. <laughs> Oh, they're lovely. All right, we're going to go to the next patient now. Okay. So, Ashley, now we're going to Belinda's house. Belinda lives with muscular dystrophy. We provide overnight support for her, um, some pain management. Hello. Hi, Belinda. So Ashley, this is Belinda. Hello Belinda. And Belinda, this is Ashley. She's a presenter on Rope TV. Oh, how do you do? Lovely to meet you, Ashley. <laughs> you too. I'm doing really well, thank you. That's good. <laughs> so how do you find the, um, the services of my care very helpful to you? They came to help me when I couldn't find any other services to sleep over at night for me. When I'm at my most vulnerable at night time, um, Kerri Ann and her team support me. So I am eternally grateful to my Care Enterprises and Kerri Ann. So Ashley, now we're going to visit Anastasio. Yep. And Anastasio has type 2 diabetes, yep. and so we give him an insulin injection every day. Mm -hmm. And he also sometimes gets ulcers on his legs, so we check his legs. So today we've met three of our clients that we look after through my care, and it's really um, a privilege to be in their lives and look after them and care for them. So joy to meet your patients today. Oh, thanks Ashley for <laughs> wanting to come and spend a day with me. You'll be ready for lunch now. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much Carrie ann for letting me spend the day with you. If you like me to come and, and spend the day at your business or organisation, Comment in the chat or visit our website. Now it's time to welcome our special guest, Ryan Elson. Hey, Ryan, how, how are you? Have Ash, nice to see you, Ryan. Nice to see you too, Ryan. Cool, cool. So, Ryan, tell us a little bit of the Ryan Elson story. Well, I'm getting on a bit now, actually, so there's a bit of story these days. So, um, I grew up uh, in Tassie. I had an interesting upbringing that my Parents uh, separated when I was seven uh, and mum died when I was nine, so I grew up in um, some foster homes and boarding schools and guardians and other bits and pieces. Um, I had some help through school from some wonderful people that sort of had it, made an effort to, to care about me and, and give me a bit of a chance and as a result of that I ended up in the police force uh, with a bit of help. I did that for ten years in Tassie. So after that, after ten years that, I decided to head up to somewhere warmer because Tassie's a bit cold. I don't know if it's lovely, looks good in photos, but a bit chilly. So yeah, watch yourself. Yeah, it is very cold it, down there It too. is a bit cold. I think it's 11 there today. So, <laughs> so anyway, I moved up here. Um, I had difficulty finding a job that was outside the police and some other bits and pieces. I fell into real estate and I did that for 15 years. Uh, I also had three kids. Um, I've got two stepkids as well now, uh, a great wife and a sort of daughter as well who we found somewhere and we keep feeding her so she keeps coming back. So that's a real quick one on my life. Wow. <laughs> so you run an organisation called Tripe Social Belonging. Can you please tell me and the viewers out there about this wonderful <coughs> venture? Thanks Ash, yep. Tribe Social Belonging started uh, about four and a half years ago. Uh, there's reasons for it which I'll tell you in a while, but Tribe basically, our job is what we do, our core purpose if you like, is to provide uh, opportunity through connection. So what we try and do is we provide, um, we set up events in a safe space, uh, friendly uh, inviting area there so that if you're lonely or isolated or anxious or struggle a bit socially, you can come along, you can grab a cuppa, you can play some board games, and you can come along and join in some activities that will give you a chance to meet people and create a community circle for yourself. Because life is who you know, and if you don't know anyone, it's pretty difficult to, to get on and, and you know get that connection that you need in, in life, okay? So that's the base of what we do. Uh, all our events are free. Uh, we do do NDIS support work so as to get 
uh, people with disabilities to our events because sadly people with disabilities quite often don't get to go to different events because people don't invite them which is bizarre to me but anyway because mm. they're such fun. What was the motivation behind you creating Tribe Social? Yeah thanks Carl. It's um, Tribe came about uh, in truth I was having a pretty difficult time in life. Uh, I was going through a divorce which although wasn't terrible they're never fun. Uh, they're it's just a difficult time in anyone's life. And then in the midst of that, my son Jacob got uh, bone cancer in his neck. And um, he, we got told immediately that it would kill him, that we weren't gonna get out of this. And so we had 14 months with Jake in his, um, his active dying, I suppose. And that's a pretty tough spot for a parent to, to be in. But what I had, while Jake was still with us, I just had so much support and I had so many people caring about me and loving me and I just, I was sitting there at one point in time and I thought, well, what if you don't have anyone? Like, what if you don't have anyone, if your day, worst day is your kids dying or you burnt your toast, it doesn't matter. It's, it's up to you what your needs are and if you don't have anyone, what do you do? So I put out on my Facebook one day, uh, if you're lonely or isolated or anxious, I'll be at the Belvedere Hotel at 5.30 p.m. and you can come and have a beer, you can be safe. Uh, that was in late, or mid 2017. Uh, we've had over 7,000 people come along now. Um, Kale's been to a few, uh, come and seen us down there. And we just, as I said previously, we just try and give that opportunity for people to make those connections. And it's, it's very important, we're social creatures, uh, humans. We need other people in our lives. There's not many true hermits around that just love being on their own so we give opportunity for that to come along and it's just it's opportunity now may i say too quickly there's two parts to opportunity guys the first one is getting an opportunity so someone giving you a chance and the second one is taking the opportunity because if you don't take that chance then nothing changes so we'll give the opportunity we'll give the chance for people to feel like they can make friends or be part of a, a community and be, be a part of something, but you gotta jump in, you gotta have a crack. So when you do that, things change, people feel like their life has improved and a lot of people tell us often that tribe, coming to Tribe every week is the best part of their week. If any of our viewers would like to get in touch or know more about Tribe Social Belonging, how can they do this? Uh, best way is probably through our website, which is www.tribebelonging com.au um, you can stalk me up by all means and hit me up my phone number is all over the internet so go your hardest uh, you can uh, our Facebook page is probably our most vibrant and you know mobile or you know agile I guess part of our business where we put our events on and let people know what we're doing and also there's plenty of ways to find us tribe social belonging we're the only one out there so hit us up come say good day Wow Ryan once again they Thank you so much for taking your time out of your super busy schedule to, to be a part of Rope TV for today. Ash, thanks, thanks for having me. Kale, thanks for having me too, buddy. All the best, gang. I'll catch up with you guys on soon. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Ryan. Time to put the spotlight on a rope participant. Billy has been attending rope for six years. And he has really developed into a talented artist. Let's take a look. When you first start the picture, it just looked like nothing, but when you build it up, it just looks like you're building a puzzle. And then you just look at it and you go, there's no way I just did this. <laughs> <laughs> Billy, I've sort of been working with Billy for a good couple of years now, um, doing the art, and uh, introduced him to their stencil and spray painting. Um, the cutting and the knife work and 
uh, the spraying and everything as well, um, making the decisions on the shading and different things like that. For me, art is a good way for me to sort of forget everything around me. It's sort of a dreamy process, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's a relaxing process, I think, because you're just concentrating on what you've got and you, you, you're not all over the place, you're focused, very focused in one area. Um, it, it is very hard to describe um, the feeling that uh, you do have. Let's just say before I did art with Grant, I wasn't in, in a exactly good spot at the time mm -hmm. in terms of mental state. <laughs> Mm. That's why I sort of used art as a calming process. What inspired me is probably to is what actually brought out the good in me, I guess. That brings us to the end of this episode. What did you think of our new show? I loved it, but I really want to know what everyone watching thinks. Make sure you comment and don't forget to like and share this video. You can also subscribe to Thrive TV on YouTube. That way you'll never miss an episode. Let's see what's coming up on the next episode. As he gets to know passion stylist Leanne Zimmerman. And we put the spotlight on Adam. That looks like it's going to be a great episode. You can RSVP now, so don't miss it. Details are in the chat. I can't wait. <laughs> See you then. Rope is a non-profit organisation providing support services to people living with intellectual disabilities. We empower personal development through the provision of information, education and life skills training. Our in-centre and community-based programs educate and encourage participants to develop life skills, including computer skills, social and interpersonal skills, travel and independent living skills. To find out more, visit our website or connect with us on social media. Rope TV is proudly produced and filmed at the studios of Trending Media Australia.